Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this tutorial, we're going to look at setting properties of spring beans. And so far in these tutorials, we've created this little spring program that creates one bean and it sets some properties of the bean via constructor arguments. So I'm setting um, a ID, a value for the ID and name properties of this bean. And a bean is just an ordinary Java object with um, corresponding properties there that you can set via a constructor. And uh, I've got this little Hello World Spring program here. Uh, another thing you can do in the XML with your beans is you can set properties uh, via set methods rather, rather than by the constructor. So as an example, I'm going to give this a private int tax ID. Uh, now it's very important here to follow standard naming conventions with regard to camel casing. Uh, so um, camel casing is uh, is this practice of upper casing each significant word in your variable name. So uh, here I've I've called this tax ID and I've upper cased the I of ID. Then I'm going to add the set method and I'm going to do I'll use this. I use like an, uh, an automatic function of Eclipse to add a set method for tax ID. So I'm going to right click the source and go to source, generate getters and setters. I'm going to um, generate getters and setters for tax ID here. Well, actually, I'll just generate a setter because I don't really need the getter. Click OK. And Eclipse and other IDEs will generate that in, in a standard format, which is um, the first word here is set with a lowercase s, and then the first letter of the variable is uppercased, and then the rest of it is just whatever the variable is called. And since I gave the variable uppercase ID, it's got an uppercase ID in this uppercase I, sorry, in the set method as well. So um, now, when I, if I go to the beans.xml, let's look at the kind of user interface type view of it, the GUI interface. And I'm going to right-click this person bean and go to insert property element. And I'm going to give the name of this property. I'm going to make it tax ID. And this is the name of the variable actually in uh, person.java here. But it's not the name of the variable that's important. It's the name of this set method here. And because the set method is called set tax ID capital T capital I. I need to call this property tax ID capital I but lowercase t because in the set method the t is only uppercase because it's been automatically preceded by set. So um, I give this basically the long and short of it is that it has the same name as the as the private instance variable tax ID with the same capitalization, which is nice and easy to remember. Let's give it a value like one two three, and I'll save that. And if we look at the XML now, um, we see that it's added this property tag with a name and a value. And if I go to person here again, let's let's get rid of this two string method. And let's just right click here and go to source, generate to string. And I, I'll generate a to string using all the fields now, including the new tax ID field. And if I run this program now, let's uh, right click the project and go to run as, jar, whoop, run as Java application is what I want. So right click, run as Java application. Now you can see we've successfully set the tax ID. So this, this output is coming, of course, from this line here. And um, actually, there's, there's another slightly different syntax that I just want to demonstrate quickly uh, because you might come across it, which is that instead of having the value here, let's just get rid of that. We can also have a value subtag. Actually, I have some I have some little problems here, which is that um, my right angle bracket is mapped to some kind of shortcut in in my version of Eclipse with this particular keyboard that I'm using. So um, I'll, I'll, I won't delete that bracket because I'll have trouble typing it again. Now, if if you want to type 
XML by hand here. You, you absolutely can. And it's easiest um, in Eclipse, and I imagine in most IDEs, to use the autocomplete feature. Once you've got Spring IDE plugin in Eclipse, it will autocomplete your Spring XML files for you. So here I could just type control space, let's see if that does anything. And already we've got autocomplete suggestions. And let's just scroll down this list and go to value and hit return. And it's automatically added this value tag for me. And you can type like partial tags and autocomplete them with control space and all kinds of stuff. And for value, I'll just add three, two, one like that. Save it. Let's just run it again. And you can see it has the same effect. Tax ID is set. So uh, basically, if you've got properties, um, then make sure you've, you add set methods in the standard format for them, and then you can set them via this property tag, either using a, a value or using a value sub tag. And uh, it's better to use the um, it's better to use this really value equals uh, three two one or whatever, just because it's more succinct and you have less tags in there. So that's it for this tutorial. Um, oh yeah, a couple of little things to mention. One is this, just that don't forget you can do Control Shift F to automatically format your XML. That's really handy. Or it's Command Shift F on the Mac. And uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, um, this uh, you can find a link to the complete course, which this is a, a free kind of sample video from in the description link under the video. In the next tutorial, we're going to look at dependency injection, and that's also going to be free. So again, if you look, if you're watching on YouTube, you can watch that. And um, we'll look at dependency injection is is uh, one of the core, kind of core ideas in Spring, and we'll look at a simple example in the next tutorial. So join me again then, and uh, don't forget to check out www.caveofprogramming.com, and you can find this source code on there as well. So uh, until next time, happy coding.